This is Paul McGuire, and we are going to talk about the blood moons as a prophetic sign. From my house in Los Angeles, um, we shot a raw, unedited, live series of uh, YouTubes, which you'll be able to watch as we send them up. Um, I say live because they've been sent up rather quickly after they've been recorded. Uh, I was up late last night till around 3 in the morning shooting the uh, moon, which turned from white to uh, blood red, and it was uh, quite, quite interesting. Now, in this first series of videos that you're going to see, um, I began shooting on April 10th, and the reason I did that uh, is because... On April 10th, an event called the Opposition happened, and uh, that's when the Earth, Mars, and the Sun align in what's called the Opposition. That's when the three celestial bodies are aligned in a row, making Mars appear to be ten times brighter uh, than it usually is in the northeast sky. Now, we, we had some trouble finding Mars because the fog settled in, but fortunately, with a uh, computer uh, software system, we were able to aim an iPad into the sky, and it, it, tracked, it tracked Mars for us. Then, uh, you're going to see another video, which was recorded um, late uh, in the evening, from about 2 to 3. Actually, I started earlier where there was the first of what's called a tetrad. Uh, that's uh, four consecutive lunar eclipses. And um, that, uh, I believe, uh, is a prophetic sign that we need to pay attention to. So in, in a couple of seconds, you'll be watching, I guess you could call it a prelude, uh, that was recorded on April 10th. And... Uh, let me read you a scripture. Uh, see, I don't get all, like, excited about, you know, I don't even get excited about blood moons or, or a lot of stuff because it could be simply something that happens on the calendar. But you see, this, this series of four blood moons, the Tetrad, along with a solar eclipse in the middle of it, is, is really quite prophetic. And I'll explain why. First of all, um, on April 15th, 2014, which you will see in the next YouTube, um, the Jewish Passover. That was the time of the Jewish Passover. Well, what happened during the Jewish Passover? The children of Israel were slaves under Pharaoh, which was the Pharaoh God-King system uh, that came out of uh, Atlantis before the flood. And I go into what exactly that means in my book, A Prophecy of the Future of America. Uh, this idea of the divine right of kings to rule goes back to the pre-flood uh, super civilizations like Thule, uh, Hyperborea, uh, China, and uh, of course Atlantis, where they had ten god kings. Now that wasn't just a metaphor. The God Kings, I believe very clearly, were fallen angels, and the fallen angels came to Earth um, at Mount Hermon uh, before the flood, and according to the Book of Enoch, now again, we don't read the Book of Enoch uh, and give it the same authority that we would give, for example, the Holy Scripture, but you see in the Book of Jude, uh, Jude clearly references these passages in the book of Enoch. So because the book of Jude, which is part of the inspired and inerrant word of God, gives us permission to look at the book of Enoch for further explanation, in this case, we can reference the book of Enoch. I would not uh, consider it prudent Bible teaching to do that on a regular basis. But when you read the book of Enoch, uh, it's very clear that the fallen angels descended upon onto the earth at Mount Hermon, which is in Phoenicia, which was in Samaria. 
And these fallen angels mated with human women before the flood, and they also uh, imparted a highly advanced science and technology. Now, why that's important is because this gives us a huge prophetic super sign, which we'll get into later in this Blood Moon series. And the prophetic super sign is this. Jesus Christ said, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Now, what happened in the days of Noah? Well, there were a number of things. Uh, there was wickedness. God judged the wickedness with a flood. But when we look at the nature of the flood as a judgment, very clear facts emerge that this was not just a general judgment. It was specific. It specifically uh, wiped out the corrupted DNA of both mankind and the animal kingdom. Now, this is essential to grasp, and we're going to get into it uh, later in this Blood Moon series, and I delve into it in great detail along with documentation in my book, A Prophecy of the Future of America. A clue will be that on the back of your dollar, you not only see the Pharaoh God King system with the Illuminati pyramid and the words in Latin, Nuvos Order Seclorum, New Order of the Ages or New World Order, uh, then you see as you go up the pyramid, the base of the pyramid is where the masses are, the slaves of the New World Order, just like the Pharaoh God King system had the Egyptian slaves. And then towards the top of the pyramid, you have the Eye of Horus, or the Eye of Lucifer. The upper part of the pyramid is where you have the elite who have been illuminated with the Luciferian light, and that's what the illumination is, or the Illuminati. And then you have a capstone that has to be built, and that's when the Antichrist will appear on the earth and rule the earth as a false Christ with the help of the uh, false prophet who uh, implements a coming one-world religious system and a one-world economic system. These are essential things to grasp. So when we're looking at the, the blood moons, and we recognize that the first blood moon is on April 15th, 2014, the Jewish Passover, Again, that's when the Jews were in captivity under Pharaoh, under the Pharaoh God-King system, and the divine right to rule by kings is based on the idea that kings genetically, through their DNA, are God-men. And uh, because they're God-men, they have the genetic superiority, so they say, and the right to rule. And where did they get this God DNA? Well, it goes back to the pre-flood civilizations where the fallen angels mated with human women, producing the Nephilim, which some people uh, say is the Rephaim. Um, and um, you have a genetic crossbreeding, a hybrid between human and fallen angel DNA, which is called the mighty men of old or the giants of old. And this is from where you get the expression of Illuminati bloodline families and so on and so forth. So these kings, these royalty, uh, have uh, fallen angel DNA in them. Therefore, they think they're superior and they have the right to rule over us. That's what the Illuminati is all about. And we are slaves genetically in this new world order, which is a counterfeit of the uh, kingdom of God. So. God judged the world system in Egypt, just like he's going to judge the world system during the tribulation period. And when the Jewish people who were living in slavery in Egypt were faithful to put the blood of a sacrificial lamb on their doorposts, the blood of this lamb uh, on their doorposts, when God visited in judgment uh, the land of Egypt, and sent uh, an angel of death to kill the firstborn of every Egyptian child, the firstborn male uh, child of every Egyptian child, that uh, angel of death would pass over the house of the children of Israel 
because the angel of death saw the blood of the Lamb. In the same way, you and I, when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are cleansed in the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible says in Revelation, the Lamb upon the throne. And because of the blood of Jesus Christ, we're cleansed from our sins if we put our faith in Christ's uh, salvation. Um, and therefore, we escape death. Now, we may die physically, but we're promised that we will be resurrected from the dead, just like Jesus Christ was, and we will live forever in eternity with God. So the Jewish Passover, where the first blood moon occurs on April 15, 2014, is, is a reminder of the deliverance of God's people from Egypt, and Egypt represents the world system because of the blood of the Lamb. Now, how this speaks to you and I prophetically all across the world is this. We have four blood moons coming up, a tetrad. In the middle of the four blood moons, we have on March 20th, 2015, a solar eclipse, which is the beginning of the Jewish New Year. Now, this is all prophetic because these blood moons and the solar eclipse are occurring uh, during a time when we're seeing one of the world's greatest historic convergences and acceleration of prophetic super signs. Let me give you an example. We have uh, the peace treaty, or so-called peace treaty, where powerful governments like the United States government and Europe uh, are forcing Israel to divide the land, to divide Jerusalem, which is against the Abrahamic covenant, by the way, because God gave the Jews, not on, based, on the basis of performance, they gave, God gave the Jews the land of Canaan, which is the land of Israel, as an everlasting covenant to the physical descendants of Abraham. Now that covenant means the Jews get the land, not on the basis of their goodness or performance, but because of a covenant and it's irrevocable. Uh, in other words, if they're disobedient, they don't lose the land. Just like if you're disobedient, you don't lose your salvation. In addition, and this is something that most people miss, they criticize Israel uh, for being pagan, for being uh, secularistic, atheistic, uh, not obeying the, the laws of God, for doing things that are uh, uh, unethical, etc., well, they're missing one point, and I'm not justifying Israel's uh, uh, actions, which uh, uh, receive uh, criticism. Uh, I'm not trying to sweep that under the carpet, but what I am simply trying to say is that the Old Testament prophets predicted that Israel would come back into the land in a state of spiritual unbelief. It never said that the Jews returned to the land because they were holy and good and they were believing God. In fact, it says the opposite. The ancient prophets like Jeremiah and others say specifically that in the last days, the Jews will return to their land in a spiritual condition of unbelief. Okay, that's what it says. Now, um, as the prophetic timetable moves on and Ezekiel 38 or the war of Gog and Magog occurs where Russia and Persia or Iran invades Israel uh, perhaps for oil God supernaturally destroys the invading armies coming against Israel with hailstones and earthquakes during this time which is called the time of Jacob's trouble which Daniel outlined uh, in great detail in the book of Daniel, specifically Daniel chapter 9, where the 70 weeks of Daniel, which is a precise cosmic chronological clock given to God to the children of Israel, but also for the Gentiles to read, so we can understand that the Bible has been supernaturally authored by God. 
Daniel gives a precise timetable uh, regarding the captivity, uh, the freedom of the children of Israel uh, throughout history, the, the precise date for the coming of the Messiah, um, the, the period known as the seven-year tribulation period, and uh, then the return of Jesus Christ. Now, this is, uh, it's precise because what has transpired so far, such as Nehemiah rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem, and then the countdown period between that and uh, the Messiah in, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Jerusalem, Jesus Christ, this has been f fulfilled, and there's the only explanation for it is that it was fulfilled supernaturally, because God knows the end from the beginning. In the same way, um, Daniel interprets the dream of King Nebuchadnezzar, who is the king of Babylon. Now, we have to remember that Babylon is a kingdom, it was a world empire, that fl uh, flowed from the Tower of Babel and ancient Babylon, built by Nimrod, who was a Nephilim, uh, or as some would define it, a Rephaim. Now, that means he had the, the genetics that were a combination of a hybrid interspecies, eat, uh, interspecies uh, breeding between fallen angels and, and a fallen angel and a human woman. So the Tower of Babel is a stargate. It's an interdimensional portal. How do we know that? Well, we know that for a number of reasons. First, um, the Tower of Babel was designed to be an astrological worship tower where they would conduct satanic ceremonies and worship the host of heaven. That means not only the stars, but uh, interdimensional beings, which would be fallen angels. Number two is the actual translation for uh, the word Babylon, referring to the Tower of Babel, it means the gate of God, or as some translate it, the gate of the gods. What does that mean? It's an interdimensional portal, which when uh, used in conjunction with a satanic worship, um, it was a portal through which fallen angels could go from one dimension into the earth. Now, the Tower of Babel is an example of what we call fallen angel technology. It, it was built uh, with occult technology that it was far beyond anything at the time, uh, just like uh, Atlantis was built with uh, fallen angel technology. And if we look at the ruins of the Incan uh, temples and the Mayan temples and the temples in Mexico and China and in Egypt um, and in North America, we see that these massive temples and e even the newly discovered temples in uh, the Siberia region of Russia, where each stone is somewhere between 3,000 to 4,000 uh, pounds making it the largest discovery in the history of human civilization because the previously largest uh, temple was in, in, located in Rome, uh, going to the Baal Beck temple ruins where the stones were 1,500 pounds apiece. These are cut with laser-like mathematical precision and they were moved intact. Now, we don't have the technology to do that today. How did these ancient civilizations do that? With the Egyptian pyramids also. In addition to how they lined up mathematically with the stars. Uh, this is an example of ancient technologies. And the Babylonian Stargate, Tower of Babel, was an example of an ancient technology. So, this prophetic super sign of the blood moons the first one uh, refers to the Passover, and this is a very important for you and I to understand. What happened during Passover? Those 
of the children of Israel who put the blood of the lamb on their, on their door, doorposts, uh, the angel of death passed over their houses. And then Moses was raised up as a deliverer to free the children of Israel from the slavery of the Pharaoh God King system. Uh, the chariots of Pharaoh and Pharaoh pursued them to the Red Sea. The Red Sea was supernaturally opened in a miracle. Children of Israel crossed over the Red Sea. The Red Sea then swallowed up Pharaoh and his chariots, and the children of Israel went into the Promised Land. Now, that speaks of the deliverance of the church, and anybody who is truly in the church, there are a lot of people who call themselves Christians that are not. But if you've received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you're truly born again, you're a member of the church or the body of Christ, there is a coming judgment that Daniel talked about, the time of Jacob's trouble, and the wrath of God is going to be poured out upon the earth, just like there was judgment uh, upon the nation of Egypt, which represents the world system, and the Pharaoh represents the Antichrist. So, coming up, the world system is going to be judged just like Egypt was, and the Antichrist will be under the judgment of God. The false prophet will be under the judgment of God. And what will happen is, all true believers in Jesus Christ will have the blood of the Lamb on their doorposts, or the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, cleansing them of all sins. Because the Bride of Christ, which is the body of Christ, of which you and I are a part if we place our faith in the Gospel of Jesus Christ and have become born again, when the judgments begin and the Antichrist uh, uh, comes into power, we are supernaturally protected, and we are delivered from the wrath to come. And at a certain point, and that is a matter of theological debate, and I don't want to get into that at this moment. I write extensively on it. You have, I have free articles at paulmcguire.com and paulmcguire.org, and I deal with it in my books if you're interested. But for this moment, be assured that God does deliver his people from the world system, or the Pharaoh God King system, uh, which began in Babylon. That's why in Revelation 17 and 18, it talks about Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots. Well, what is Mystery Babylon? She is the false religious system, the coming one world religion. Um, and it says all the kings of the earth fornicated with her. Uh, the, the wealthy, the elite, fornicated with Babylon, the, the, the whore. And uh, who is Babylon? Well, it goes back to uh, Babylon under Nimrod. And Nimrod's wife was Semiramis, who, uh, as history uh, indicates, was either a, ma a very beautiful woman who was a madam of a, a, a house of prostitution, or she was a prostitute herself, some say she was actually um, Nimrod's mother. Uh, she was an exceptionally attractive woman. Uh, Nimrod married her, um, well, supposedly after uh, meeting her at a, a house of prostitution. He couldn't tell the people of Babylon that his wife was a prostitute. So he continued on, and then uh, he lied to the people and said she was a goddess. And her name was called um, Semiramis. And as history moves on, she's also called Isis and Aphrodite and Venus. And she is the female goddess. That is Babylon. And she kills, by the way, Nimrod and lies to the people and says that uh, um, Nimrod resurrected into the heavens and became Ra, the sun god, or Horus, or um, Osiris, or o Apollo, or uh, Zeus, or Prometheus. See, these mystery Babylonian religions continue on today. So God delivers us from Babylon, 
from Egypt, and that is the world system. And we are supernaturally delivered, like the children of Israel were, um, and we are taken not to the promised land down on earth, but we're taken to the promised land, uh, which is a new earth, a new heaven, and a new Jerusalem. So, I'm Paul McGuire. You can get more information at paulmcguire.com. We're going to load up more YouTubes for you, but there's prophetic significance in the blood moons. We have uh, Russia, the Ukraine, uh, Syria. We have the potential collapse of the global monetary system. Uh, so many things converging, so many things converging uh, in this tetrad of four blood moons. So let's go to the first uh, part of the video. And remember, it's raw and unedited. And if I look like a zombie, it's because the lighting is off. But, you know, so what? I'm not trying to do some kind of slick production. Uh, this was shot from my backyard in L.A., and I hope you're blessed by it. God bless you, Paul McGuire. And remember, the purpose of the blood moons is to be a sign. It comes from the Hebrew word alf, which means an omen or a warning. Uh, and the blood moons correspond to problems in Israel and God's supernatural deliverance. And we're going to see that very soon happening in our world. And all I can tell you is get ready because um, in terms of practical preparedness, but most of all, spiritually get ready, because guess what? Jesus Christ is coming soon. I'm Paul McGuire. God bless you. This is Paul McGuire from... Uh, Southern California, and uh, we're outside tonight, and uh, there is an alignment of um, the sun, the moon, and Mars. So it's cloudy and it's overcast, but that little dot you can see out there is Mars. Now, um, it's going to be hard to see. That's not Mars, that's somebody's house. It's, it's uh, almost impossible to see now because of the overcastness. So we'll go back out. There we go, that's Mars. Now I'm gonna zoom in on it. It's, it's supposed to be 10 times brighter than the stars. Uh, I believe that's Mars. Is that Mars or a plane? I can't tell. It's bouncing around. I think it's Mars, I'm not sure. So anyway, the moon is up here. And we'll go down here again. Again, it became overcast rather quickly. So now we'll go to this computer program where you see a close-up um, that's Mars. So if we can see the outline of the constellation, the, the, that female figure. Okay. That's, okay, we're, okay, that's the constellation. That's not a naked woman, folks, so don't get upset. That is Mars. And actually behind her out there, okay, that's Mars there. And that's exactly where I showed you before, that tiny dot. You can see the dot there, okay? It's almost impossible to see because of the cloud bank. But that's Mars. And this is... Um, next week will be the uh, first of a tetrad, four blood moons. And um, you can just shoot me here. If it says record, we're okay. Does it say REC? Mm -hmm. Okay, so come up, stand over here so the light's not on you. It's on me. Okay, do we have light? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we lost our light because 
cloud bank settled in, but you could see with the computer software program that the planet up there is the planet Mars. It was approximately 10 times brighter. Uh, it'll get brighter tonight. And then we have the moon. So the moon, the sun, and Mars are in alignment. Then this coming week, uh, we have the uh, Jewish Passover and the first of what will be four blood uh, red moons. And when you go back in ancient history uh, of Israel, um, and especially since the formation of Israel in 1947, 1948, the appearance of these uh, uh, blood moons have been very prophetic. For example, uh, in AD 32-33, there was a blood red moon. Uh, during the 1967 Six-Day War, where uh, Israel uh, miraculously defeated uh, their enemies that surrounded them, uh, the Egyptian Air Force, for example, uh, occurred during a tetrad, that means four, uh, a period of four blood moons over a, a period of time. Now, going back to the actual birth of the nation of Israel, 1948, I think it was 1949, there was a uh, blood moon. And uh, I remember talking to a good friend of mine, uh, General Shimon Aram, who was one of Israel's most famous uh, military generals, and he was there at all these wars, and he was talking about the fact that Israel won supernaturally uh, against Egypt and a massive army of tanks and a massive air force, and they should have been slaughtered, but Israel regained Jerusalem during the 1967 Six-Day War. So here we are in America and in uh, the book of Joel and in the book of Acts, especially Acts chapter 2, we talk about the signs of the end of the age, the signs of the times. And we read about how that uh, the moon will be turned into blood, the sun into darkness before the great an awesome day of the Lord comes. So that's a prophetic event. Now I'm not saying this uh, blood moon coming up in about uh, a week that that's going to happen, but we're, we're moving into a time where we're going to see a tetrad uh, of four blood moons. Now why that's important is because look at the global situation right now. We have a hundred thousand uh, uh, Russian troops surrounding the Ukraine. When we read Ezekiel 38, the prophecy of how uh, Russia, or Rosh, uh, leads a coalition of nations, which includes Persia, which is modern Iran, and invades Israel in the last days in what's called the Ezekiel 38 scenario, a war of Gog and Magog. That could happen at any time. It's, it's, it's uh, coming to the forefront. Also, when we translate the word Rosh, uh, from Ezekiel 38, we find that Russia, or Rosh, it specifically refers to the Ukraine also, and the Scythians, which would be the Russian nations in southern Russia. So, so this blood moon that's happening now is happening on a parallel track with enormous prophetic signs. We have Syria, uh, mentioned in Psalms 83, and the potential of a U.S. Uh, military conflict in Syria, uh, which could be catastrophic. Iran has announced that it's going to have nuclear weapons by this summer. Uh, Iran is one of the Ezekiel 38 nations. It says it's going to destroy Israel. So we have this convergence of prophetic super signs, the possibility of World War III. You can see it in the news every day. What's happening in the Ukraine? Uh, Putin's plans to invade possibly Poland and Finland and other nations of the former Soviet bloc. We see uh, the U.S. may have to align itself with NATO and fight some kind of proxy war with Russia. We have the entire international uh, monetary system uh, in, in a very, very dangerous place. Um, the, there could be the, the rapid devaluation of the dollar. We could uh, move into a world currency. 
Um, we have the Ring of Fire, all the earthquakes going from Japan to up the West Coast, California, Washington State. Um, here in California, we're, we're videoing this right now. Uh, I woke up just uh, uh, two weeks ago before I spoke at the Orlando Prophecy Summit. I was awakened by three earthquakes and my house almost collapsed during the Northridge earthquake. So we see all these prophetic super signs happening and just out of the blue, but it's not out of the blue. I believe it's a d divine coincidence. We have the four blood moons uh, written about in the book of uh, Joel, in the uh, book of uh, Acts. And when you translate the word signs, it comes from a Hebrew word, alf, which means a warning or an omen. These signs, like the blood moon, are warnings or an omen of God's judgment. That's what the Hebrew uh, scholars and prophets believed. So these signs in the heavens, which is referred to by Christ, are warnings to the people of earth that God's prophetic program is going to take place. There will be the return of Israel's Messiah on planet Earth. Now, we also have the Mark of the Beast technology arising. So I talk about this in my book, A Prophecy of the Future of America. You can get more information at paulmcguire.com or paulmcguire.org. McGuire is M-C-G-U-I-R-E. And also I have a YouTube where I uh, talk about these things in detail. But most importantly, I lead and invite you to participate with me in a prayer of repentance and crying out uh, to the Lord. And we need to uh, cry out to the Lord for America uh, because um, I believe we've crossed over the line and we have lost God's protective hand. And these, these signs that Jesus Christ talked about in Matthew 24, the signs of the times, wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes, pestilences, uh, um, mass starvation, um, uh, false prophets, Messiah, signs in the heavens. These are all happening with, with acceleration. So uh, I invite you to open your Bibles and study these scripture verses and know what's going on because this isn't just human excitement and sensationalism. There's something to it. Can we get a close-up of that computer screen again? And uh, just get a close-up of the computer screen, and we can lose me here. I'll keep talking. Uh, again, Mars is out there somewhere. Uh, we got a cloud bank, so we'll have to go with the... With the uh, I could search forever looking for Mars. I can see it with the naked eye. The camera isn't picking it up. But let's go to the computer screen. And again... For those of you with purient interests, this is not a naked woman. This is a constellation, and this is a computer software program where you aim your computer at the sky, and there is uh, Mars, which is behind me. Now, I'm going to take this computer, and I'm going to lift it into the sky, and you can see from the computer, that's the computer, that's the moon. Then I'm going to hold it up here, and what I originally thought was Mars, uh, and that's another constellation there, uh, that's uh, Jupiter. So then I can aim it. Um, it actually goes through the Earth. I don't know why it's not working now. It goes through the Earth and you can see a different planet. I can't find that now. So let's settle for Mars. There it is. Whew. The blood red moon. And these prophetic signs are happening right before us. I'm Paul McGuire.